it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm sharing a card featuring some different watercoloring techniques using traditional watercolors and distress inks. And I'm also going to be featuring some Ellen Hudson and Pretty Pink Polish exclusive products. So to start off with, I've got a piece of watercolor paper here that I'm taping down onto my work surface using some masking tape. I'm just putting that down so that way it's not shifting around when I'm doing my watercoloring. This is going to give, make sure that the paper stays nice and flat. So to begin with, I'm going to start doing some stamping and I'm going to be laying out some stamps. These are from the Bohemian Garden stamp set by Ellen Hudson. I love the fun and playful feel of these stamps and I'm going to be using these to create my background. We're going to be stamping these images along the top and bottom portion of this card panel and this is going to create a nice frame for our sentiment area. So I mounted them onto a clear block and I'm going to be stamping them with some Versamark ink. Before I do that though, I want to go ahead and prep my surface of the paper with a powder tool. This is by EK Success and it's really great for making sure you cut down on a static cling. You could also use a dryer sheet or an embossing buddy. There's a few different types of products that you can use to go ahead and do the same type of effect. I'm going to stamp this with Versamark ink like I said. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this right down onto the paper. I've mounted them all onto the clear block right away so that way it cut down on having to stamp them all one at a time. I just arranged them onto the paper and then picked them up with the block before I stamped. So I'm going to heat emboss with some white embossing powder. This is from Ranger. You can see I've got that embossed onto the paper with my heat gun. This is going to be creating a resist for our watercoloring. Before I do that though, I want to go ahead and bring in my distress inks. I'm using some sponge sugar, picked raspberry, and seedless preserves distress inks. I'm going to be focusing the darkest coloring along the edges of the paper and having the lightest color towards the center. So you can see here, I put down the spun sugar distress ink and I'm bringing in the picked raspberry and I'm bringing that out towards the center. Not going all the way because I want to make sure I leave a light area in the middle and that's going to give my scene some dimension here. So I'll just keep adding layers of color on there and then once I've got the pinks all blended I'm going to take some purples and add some really dark shading just along the very edges. I'm not going to go very far with this because this can get overpowering and I'll just blend that back out then with my pink colors. So now I'm going to take my paintbrush here. This is a water brush by Pentel. You could use just a regular paintbrush and some water to do the same thing. But basically what I'm doing is I'm picking up the ink that we laid down over top of these flowers. So I'm just adding all that water and then I'm going to dab that up with my baby wipe. And this is kind of bleaching the paper and giving a nice cool effect. So I'm just going to keep doing this over top of all of my flowers until I've got all of the ink lifted off. And so that the color is very light underneath these flowers. Once I've got that all done, I'm going to go ahead and dry it. And then I took some plain water and just flicked this on top of the Distress Inks to create some water splatters. I really love this effect because it's really fun. And I just let the water sit onto the paper for about 30 seconds or to a minute and then I lifted that off with a dry rag. Alright, so now I've got my watercolors. These are the Tropicals by Prima. These are part of their watercolor confection series. And I love these watercolors because they're really, really fun and vibrant colors. I'm going to be using these to paint my watercolored flowers. So I'm doing some really simple watercoloring here. I'm just going to be dropping color in on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video and let you listen to some music while I color. And then I'll come back when we go ahead to finish the rest of the card.
right, once we finished all of our coloring, I'm gonna remove the masking tape from the edges of the paper. And you can see it leaves this beautiful white border along the edges of the cardstock. I really love the effect of that nice crisp line. It's really, really beautiful. You just want to be careful when you're taking the tape off. You can see there I kind of peeled that little corner of the paper up, but I just rubbed it off a little bit with my finger and you'll never know that it was ripped. I want to be able to give these flowers a nice bright white outline. One thing you want to remember with watercolors is that they can stain things a little bit more than distress inks do. Embossing powder resists distress inks, but if the watercolors, especially these Prima ones, they stain the embossing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp back over top of them using my Misty Stamping Tool, and I'm going to stamp that and heat emboss the white back on top. And this creates a nice beautiful white outline for my images. So I'll just line these up, and then I'll go ahead and stamp them down onto my paper using some Versamark ink once again. The Misty Tool is perfect for this because it makes sure that you get all those areas and it's perfectly lined up and you don't have any mistakes or misalign something or anything like that. I love using the Misty for things like this. Always make sure that I get my stamping in the perfect place. Once I've got that all outlined, I'm gonna bring in my Wink of Stella glitter brush. I'm gonna go ahead and add some glitter on top of the flowers and the leaves. This just adds a little bit of sparkle and shine to the card. Next, I'm gonna bring in that EK Success powder tool once again, and I'm gonna be creating my sentiment. To do this, I'm gonna be using the Rainy Days stamp set by Pretty Pink Posh, and I'm also going to be using the zipper panel die set from Ellen Hudson to die cut a sentiment that goes with this stamped sentiment that I'm creating. So in the end, it's going to say wishing you congrats. And I'm just gonna heat emboss that with some white embossing powder again. To create the die cut sentiment, I'm gonna be attaching some glitter cardstock here onto some craft foam. I love doing this to create dimension for my die cut pieces. It makes sure that I get some nice even coverage on the die cut and I don't have to worry about adding little pieces of foam tape or anything like that, especially for an intricate die like this, congrats. So I'll just run this through my die cutting machine. I've got my magnetic platform down underneath my cutting pads and this makes sure that the die doesn't shift as I'm running it through the machine. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take some PPA matte adhesive. I'm gonna be gluing this down onto my panel here. I'm just gonna quickly add some glue along the backside and then just lay this down on top. And then I'll go ahead and take a clear block or anything heavy. I'll go ahead and really press that down to make sure it adheres down to the paper good and gives it a little bit of time to bond. So while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and take some craft foam and I'm gonna cut this down to just slightly smaller than the card panel. Doesn't have to be exact, I'm just quickly gauging it and then trimming it down. I'm using some score tape on the back side of the cardstock and I'm gonna go ahead and attach my foam tape on top of that. Score tape is really handy for adhering things down like foam tape, as well as different materials that are a little bit harder to adhere because the score tape is quite strong. So I'm just gonna use that on the back side here and then I'll go ahead and attach it down onto my card base the same way. All right, to finish off this card, I'm gonna be using some Pretty Pink Posh Sparkling Clear Sequin Mixes. I love these sequins, these are so beautiful. They're one of my favorites out of all the different types of sequins, this match with everything. So that's gonna finish the card for today. I hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to stop over at the Pretty Pink Posh blog where you can get more information on this card, including the products used. And also be sure to stop over at Helen Hudson where you can get more information on the challenge. If you enjoyed this video, here's another one you might be interested in featuring some watercoloring techniques. Thanks again for stopping by. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.